To help put the clash at the Coliseum into an historical context, I am pleased to welcome Harold Osmer to the show. You see, Harold is considered the ultimate source for Southern California motorsports history. He's authored a book entitled Where They Raced, and believe me, it is indeed a true tell-all about all the old racetracks in Southern California. Hey, Harold, I can't thank you enough for joining me today. How are you? Hey, I'm happy to be here with you, Jack, and I do appreciate you having me on. By the way, more auto racing in terms of just sheer venue numbers has taken place in Southern California than any other place in the world. That was just an amazing fact that when we decided to get together uh, that you revealed to me. And, and in many ways, it, I think, kind of goes hand in glove with the decision that NASCAR has made to, and I'm going to use the term return to the Coliseum, because while this may be the first time for NASCAR, it certainly is not the first time for auto racing. Oh, that's absolutely true. And what the first auto race in Los Angeles took place in 1903 at Agricultural Park, which is where the Coliseum is today. Um, it was larger, though. It was a one mile horse track, as a lot of things were at the turn of the last century. And uh, so 1903, they had the Fiesta Week celebrations and they held some automotive races there which were, you know, one car competing against another kind of thing. And that was 1903 on that very site. And then later on, they, uh, in the 1940s, they ran midgets there. Not unusual because midgets, especially uh, post-World War II, probably the more popular form of motorsport. In fact, you can trace kind of the reasons why Bill France Sr. got everybody together because it was midgets that were predominant and stock car racing was still regionalized and coupling them with, with stadiums uh, certainly was, was a natural because they were small, they were compact and they fit. But I wonder from your perspective, what the impact of this event will have uh, uh, from a historical perspective, as far as Southern California auto racing, NASCAR certainly is beating the drums I just finished a, a chat with Dave Allen, who is in charge not only of what's going to take place this weekend at the Memorial Coliseum, but upcoming in the end of February. Finally, SoCal gets back to NASCAR Cup action at his Auto Club Speedway. So where does it all fit from your, your perspective? Well, the, the Bush Clash that's going to take place there coming right up here is, um, I think, going to be a one-off type of, of an event. Um, it takes a lot of effort to put on a show like this. Um, it's a quarter mile track that goes over, in essence, the athletic track, which is kind of there and kind of not. Uh, and so I don't know that this is, will be a regular event kind of thing. Um, it makes sense that they're doing it this time around because the following week, there's there's some football game that's going on. Some, and it's, some it's, big game. Yeah, right. It's, it's, <laughs> and that game, from what I understand, is like the Daytona 500 of football games <laughs> going on right down the street. And so that'll, that'll be great. Um, this is, as we mentioned a little bit, uh, this is not the first time that they've raced cars on, a, in essence, a quarter mile track inside the Coliseum. Uh, promoter Bill White, who was famous in the early part of the last century, for promoting a lot of different things, including Mines Field and Barney Old Field and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. he, he arranged to get uh, the midgets racing inside the Coliseum. He brought in and built a paved quarter mile track right over the athletic track. And this was 1945. And he set it up and he had people come out and they attracted. And mind you now, this wasn't just a one-off kind of thing. These guys ran for four years, 1945 through 48, they held 32 events. And over that 32 events, they averaged 18,000 people in attendance mm. at these things. And when the standard purse that you put out would typically be a couple hundred dollars for an event, he was paying 40% of the gate. 40% of the gate came up to about $15,000 in 1945 dollars. And they, had, they ran full fields out there. The other thing that happened with it was these drivers for the midgets, and this was right after World War II, these are the same guys who ran at Indianapolis. 
And so mm. it was a big deal for them to run not only the midgets here, but go out and run in Indianapolis in, uh, you know, throughout the Midwest, they would run there. So you had the winningest driver over those 32 events was Sam Hanks. And he only had six wins. So of the 32 events, it isn't as though you had one guy dominate the whole show. But getting back to the track layout, they had a quarter mile paved oval set in there in place for the first three or four races that they ran in 45. In 46, they bumped it out to a one third mile track and added just the slightest banking, they called it. But the guys were going faster on the third mile track than they were on the quarter mile track. And they ran in front of huge crowds. You know, you'd get 50, 60,000 people would show up. A lot of times it was your standard, call it your standard midget show. And they would have a 40 lap main event. A couple of times they ran 250 lap events, which just adds to the drama because now you need to stop for fuel. Somebody runs out of gas, some car breaks down. So there's no telling who wins. And people were showing up in droves. So if we want to know more about the historical perspective of SoCal Auto Racing, your book, as I said, uh, in my estimation, is probably the best tome uh, that details all of it. Where can they get uh, uh, your Where They Raced Now, a Turn 3 edition? <laughs> it's been 25 years in the making, too, and you're... you're you're great about that. Uh, um, it's at uh, hopublishing.com. That's Harold Osmer Publishing. I know H.O. Publishing. You'd think I'd write about little trains or something, but that's uh, <laughs> not the case. But, uh, you know, they. I'm a little, I'm not shocked, but I'm a little disappointed by the L.A. Coliseum, for one, because they, you go on their website and you look at their things and they talk all about the football games and the Olympics were there twice and uh, all the athletic stuff that went on there. And they have zero word about the auto races that took place there. You can go on to the Wikipedia thing for the Coliseum, for instance. And I know that's not an official deal. Zero word about auto racing. And I'm not sure why. As I mentioned, this was the midgets that ran there. They formed their own organization. They ran for four years to huge crowds. It was 32 events over the span of those four years. So it wasn't a one-off. Yeah. And yet there's there's no mention of it anywhere. Man, we're getting we're getting the short end of this stick, that's for sure. Well, but, uh, I don't think we have to worry about it uh, after this coming weekend because once the the uh, bush light clash at the Coliseum takes that final checkered flag, I don't care if it's Wikipedia. I don't care who it is. Uh, regardless of how the event turns out, uh, it will be a massive footnote in the history of the L.A. Memorial Coliseum. And when you finally get around to the next edition of where they raced, I guess you're going to call it turn four. I'm sure it will occupy a, a special place. I do appreciate your stopping by and visiting with us here to help put us in a historical mood for this upcoming Bush like clash at the Coliseum, not the very first time that motorsports has invaded that historical, iconic place in central LA, but it will get everybody's attention. Harold, good luck to you and thanks so much. Thank you very much. This is going to be a spectacular event, no doubt about that. Indeed. Thank you, Harold. Yes, sir.